Have you ever been recording a vocal and everything seems to be going great? Everything sounds good, but then something happens that just seems to ruin the whole take. Maybe the singer sings the wrong word, or maybe they overload the microphone with some sort of plosive. You wish you could go in and just re-record that one little blip of audio, or you could replace that one word. But what you're looking for is called auto punch. And in today's video, I wanna show you how you can auto punch your audio in PreSonus Studio One. So let's get started. All right, for the purposes of this video today, I've got my wife's version of the song, When the Morning Comes, pulled up. I've got all of her vocal tracks muted. I encourage you to go over to Spotify, look for Lana Green. You can listen to this version of the song whenever you like. But for the purposes of the instruction, I've got her vocal tracks muted. I'm gonna record a quick chorus of me singing into this Neumann TLM 103, and then I'll show you how to auto punch problematic areas. By and by. Saints of God are gathered. Tell the story how we overcome. We will understand it better by and by. All right, so as you can see, I've got a vocal. Don't judge. Uh, the middle section, I purposefully had this middle phrase really just messed up. So I'm okay with the beginning part, but this middle section here, we really just need to redo. So the thing that we're gonna do with an auto punch is we wanna first set the loop region to be the area that we want to re-record. So if I zoom into this audio track here, first thing I recommend is you go into this burger stack at the bottom right, click and drag up so we can see more of the waveform. This will give us more precision when we're setting what areas we need to re-record. Like I said before, go listen to my wife's version of this song on Spotify. Just look for Lana Green. This middle section of audio is the most egregious. It seems like the words just trailed off. So in the extreme situation like this, I'm going to go up first and foremost with the auto punch region. I need to take the pencil tool that's just above your timeline. You're going to click and drag and the loop region needs to cover the area that you want to re-record. So in this instance, that middle phrase needs to be done again. So I'm just going to highlight this region and then to make the auto punch accessible, you need to hit I on your keyboard. So make sure that this auto punch icon is actually colored red. If the icon is red, what that means is the next time you hit record, the only time it's gonna start recording is within that loop region. So in this instance, I'm gonna keep the vocal track that was at the beginning. I'm gonna keep the phrase at the end for now. And I want to record within this phrase right here. Uh, important thing with auto punch, make sure that you record a little bit before and a little bit after what you actually need it to be, because you can always condense the audio, but you can't expand an audio recording with something that wasn't recorded. So if it wasn't recording after the loop region, you will not be able to extend it that far out. So always make your region larger than what you actually need it to be. So here I've got my auto punch set. I'm gonna go back to the beginning of this chorus. I'm gonna sing along as it's going, but then you'll notice that the tracks audio stops whenever the loop region comes into play. So now when I hit record. By and by when the morning when the saints of God are gathered home, we will tell the story. All right, so that one cut it pretty close. As you can see, if I had had my loop region set a little bit further, I would have given myself some more wiggle room because I cannot click and drag this out further. I can move it in as much as I want. So let's take a listen to this now that it's been re-recorded. Saints of God are gathered home. We will tell the story how we overcome. We will understand it better by and by. Now, this is going to be more apparent whenever you're doing vocals. With instruments, it's relatively easy to kind of hide these auto punches. But with a vocal, there's so many variables of like microphone placement. You really need to have everything as much similar as it was to the first time you recorded. So if I'm recording vocals at this height with the Neumann TLM 103, if I've got this shock mount over it and my head is in front of the microphone, 
that will be one sound. But if I go to record on the next day or the next week, maybe I have some sinus issues or whatever, it's going to be more jarring that this thing is different. So you need to have as many variables controlled as possible if you're going to punch this stuff in. To make the case in point, if I go in here at the end of this vocal track and I want to do a punch in, if I want to show you just the difference that it makes if my head is further away from the microphone, the difference it's going to make on that auto punch, because you really can't get away with auto punching these little regions, the more egregious that it sounds different. Okay. So if I want to make it say better by and by, if I want to punch in that region there and my head is further away from the microphone than it originally was, here's what that sounds like. How we overcome, we will understand it better by and by. Okay, so first of all, you can see that the waveform is much smaller. And if I try to cinch this up, I'll get it as close as I can. Let's take a listen to that. We overcome, we will understand it better by and by. So the biggest difference is that the further away you are from the microphone, the less proximity effect, you're going to hear a lot less low end. So this section here that I just recorded, it sounds a lot thinner than the original did. So you got to be very careful when you're auto punching this kind of stuff. If you're auto punching like a bass guitar, or like I said, if your guitar was buzzing and it's not like a prominent track, obviously you're going to be able to hide those differences, but be aware of that, that when you're auto punching, you need to make sure that as many variables are consistent as possible. Otherwise, it'll sound quite unnatural. Now, obviously, there's a danger with auto punch, and that comes with your consistency. You need to make sure that the microphone or the vocal chain, whatever you were using to record the first time, it needs to be consistent throughout because the auto punch is going to sound very different. If you're at a different day, you could have sinus issues. You could be a different distance from the microphone, even a matter of two to three inches will make the audio sound different. And then you've got more problems on your hand than when you started. So use the auto punch sparingly as you need it. It's a good tool to be using. It's great when you're working with a vocalist that you're having to tell them, hey, I need you to sing this phrase again, rather than having them sing an entire chorus over and over and over again until you get it right. You can just auto punch a few areas if you need to. Make sure you also turn off auto punch. Uh, this has happened many times before. You sit down to record, you hit the record button, you're playing along with the song, but nothing got recorded. It was because your auto punch key was still set. So I on your keyboard, think about punching, getting punched in the eye, hit the I key on your keyboard, make sure that icon is turned off. And then also make sure that when you're auto punching, you're setting that loop region to be wider than what you need it to be, because you can always condense the audio down. You can't expand audio that wasn't recorded in the first place. So I hope this video has been beneficial to you. For more videos just like this, hit the like and subscribe buttons. Let me know in the comments section any areas you want me to do kind of a deep dive in. I'd be happy to oblige, and I'll see you at the next video. Thanks for watching.